Hey, Rodney, what's in the pot? <laughs> Himalayan possum stew. <laughs> I don't know about that, Rodney. I thought you was going to do your famous Rodney's chicken and waffles. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll give it a look. Rodney? <laughs> Something about that don't look right. What did you mean by Himalayan possum? <laughs> you found Himalayan in the road. Well, Rodney, that would explain all the tire tread marks in your meat there. No, but we're going back with the original plan. Rodney's chicken and waffles. And y'all stick around. I'll show you how. Before we go any further, I'd like to remind you guys, please don't forget to mash that subscribe button, give me a big old thumbs up, maybe even leave me a comment or two, I sure would appreciate it. For this year recipe, we're going to need some pre-seasoned cornbread stuffing, some bacon bits, a package of peppered white country gravy, and a package of pre-made chicken strips. We're going to start this off by making the stuffing. So let's get us a large saucepan and add to that four tablespoons of butter. On a high heat, we'll allow that butter to melt, keeping it stirring all the while, of course. And then we're gonna add three and a half cups of water. You can use chicken broth if you like. And then we'll add the spice pack. Keep it stirring and we'll bring it to a boil. Once it's to a boil, we'll add in the cornbread croutons. And make sure you stir it in really well. Want to make sure all of those croutons get wet. Set it off to the side. Let's go ahead and get those chicken tenders ready. That's 400 degrees for 15 minutes. While them's cooking, we'll go ahead and do our gravy. To a medium saucepan, we'll add two cups of water and one cup of milk in the contents of the gravy package. Now as you're pouring this into your saucepan, make sure you whisk it all along. That way you won't get any lumps in it. Ronnie asked me the other day if I knew the difference between a northern zoo and a southern zoo. Well, I didn't. He said in the north, it just says the name of the animal. In the south, it says the name of the animal in a recipe. Ha! That's funny. Say, that reminds me. If y'all are looking for a way to support this channel, keep this here trainer rolling full of farm fresh content twice a week, why don't you slide over to my Teespring shop, get yourself a coffee mug or maybe even a t-shirt. But if you don't want to do that, how about you go to buymeacoffee.com and for the price of a cup of coffee, you help keep this train a rolling. You can also visit boondockerswelcome.com. All of the links are in the description. Thanks a bunch. Now we got to keep stirring this gravy. Once we get it to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat on it and let it simmer for about another minute, continually stirring it. And then we'll set it off to the side. Let's have a look at those chicken tenders. They ought to be about done. And they are. Goodness gracious, you know what? I almost forgot the bacon. How could I do that? So this package of bacon, we're gonna put about half of it in there. That ought to be somewhere between, no, four and six strips of bacon. And mix it in really well. Make sure it gets really incorporated. Because our next step, is to make the waffles. So after your waffle iron's good and hot and you've oiled it up with some Pam or something of that nature, put your two good sized dollops of that stuffing in there and then mash it down. Now the trick to this is because it's a lot more wet than say a waffle batter, you're gonna wanna let this cook for just a little while longer. So after your light indicates to you that the waffle is done, let it go another couple of minutes. They should be crispy to the touch. 
Whoo, look at them, ain't they pretty? Let's assemble this dish. We'll take first and put our plate with the waffles on it and put a couple of those chicken strips on it. Then we'll get that gravy, put a couple of good scoops on top of there, and whoo, that's gonna be about it. Look at that, ain't she pretty? Let's have a closer look at that. Mmm, hardly fit to eat. We'll keep going till we find a good spot. Whoo, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is done. D-U-N, done. Ladies and gentlemen, these the, the chicken fingers came out nice and crispy. You let the waffles go for just a minute or two past the time the light comes on on the waffle iron says they're done. Make sure the waffles are nice and crispy and pour that gravy on top. Whoo, gonna be hardly fit to eat. But we'll keep going until we find a good spot, won't we? That's right. Well, I guess all we got left to do is taste it. And here it goes. Mmm. Mm, 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 mm. You got to kiss an angel good morning. Them is delicious. Man, those turned out great. Rodney, you outdid yourself. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be about it for this episode of Eating Good in the Woods. On behalf of myself and Mrs. Eating Good in the Woods, we hope you all have a blessed Christmas. And ladies and gentlemen, until next time, y'all going out there and be nice to one another. I sure love you. God bless. Bye-bye.